Welcome all. By now we know that the main distress in the flexible payments are rutting and a fatigue cracking. This rutting and fatigue cracking occurs in a payment over a different period of life. Rutting occurs at the initial stage of a payment and a fatigue cracking occurs at the later life of the payment. These distresses are affected by a various factors that include the traffic factors, climatic conditions and the material characteristics. In this lecture, we are going to focus on the bituminous characteristics uh, behavior to a fatigue cracking. The outline of a presentation is as follows. So, we will study what is fatigue cracking in a bituminous layer and what are the factors that controls the fatigue cracking followed by uh, uh, we will focus more on the bituminous uh, mixture related properties. So, we will see how to characterize or simulate the fatigue damage of a bituminous mixture in the laboratory and how to find out the fatigue life of the bituminous mixtures. And we will use this laboratory characterized property of a bituminous mixtures and give as an input and see how to uh, predict the fatigue performance of a bituminous layer, especially this step is used when you do a payment design. We know that the bituminous mixture in a payment is subjected to a wide varying temperature. For example, if the payment temperature is varying from a, uh, 0 to say 70 degrees Celsius, at very high temperature, the bitumen behaves as a viscoelastic fluid like behavior and at very low temperature, bitumen behaves as either an elastic or a viscoelastic solid like behavior. Now, let us see when does the payment uh, rut or when does the payment cracks. Now, if you look into this picture, so as the temperature varies from a low to high, low to high, at high temperature, the bitumen will be more viscous or viscoelastic, viscoelastic fluid as the fluid behavior dominate. The payment being subjected to a traffic loading with a viscoelastic fluid like behavior, there will be a permanent deformation on a material. So, at high temperature, the bituminous mixture is more susceptible to permanent deformations. This in addition, if the traffic is moving at very slow speed or otherwise in a laboratory, if you test it at very low frequency, this will increase the rate of deformation. So, uh, at low, when the traffic is moving at very low speed, the, pay, the load, is, load on the payment will act for a longer duration of a time. So, uh, this critical viscoelastic behavior is time dependent. So, for long duration of a time, the deformation will increase. So, viscoelastic fluid like behavior in combinations with a slow speed vehicle, if you get this kind of a situation, the payment will be more prone to rutting. Likewise, the payment will be more prone to fatigue cracking when the temperature of the payment is very low. The payment will exhibit viscoelastic solid or elastic behavior will dominate. So, this viscoelastic solid behavior in combination with the high frequency or a fast moving vehicle, if this situation happens in a field, the payment will be susceptible to cracking. The cracking in the payment does not occur all of a sudden at the initial life of a payment when the payment is subjected to a traffic loading there will be a permanent deformation in a material and at the critical locations there will be a strain hardening. On continuous loading at this critical locations where the stress concentration occurs and this stress concentration will develop a micro cracking in the payment as shown here. Over a period of time, again on a continuous loading, this micro cracking or a micro damage coalesces to form a macro damage. So, this crack formation here, you can see a micro cracks here at from the critical locations combined together to form a macro cracks or a crack formations. So, this fatigue cracking or a cracking in a payment does not occur all of a sudden. It occurs due to a repeated loading when and the process is like initially there will be a formation of a micro cracks and the micro cracks combine together to form a macro cracks. Now, if you look into the 
critical locations. So IRC 37 gives the critical locations uh, where the crack starts. If you see this picture clearly, you will have two location. One is at the bottom of a bituminous layer, you have two bituminous layer here. One is rut resistant layer, another is uh, fatigue resistance layer. If you see the tensile strain at the bottom of a bituminous layer will be critical for a fatigue damage to occur in the pavement. And the other condition is tensile strain near the surface of the pavement. So, these two strains leads to the fatigue cracking in the pavement. Uh, when you see a cracked or a damaged pavement, you can see a two types of crack. One is uh, something like a group of crack here, we, which we call it as an alligator crack. Another is something like a longitudinal crack on the pavement. This alligator crack is said to be uh, uh, said to initiate from the bottom of an asphalt layer, and we call it as bottom up cracking. So, the crack initiates from the bottom of the asphalt layer and propagates to the top something like this initiates at the bottom of an asphalt layer and propagates to the top. This longitudinal cracks initiates at from the top of an asphalt layer and propagates towards down. So, this bottom up cracking will will be due to a tensile strain at the bottom of an asphalt layer and the top down cracking will be due to a result of a tensile strain nearing the top surface of an asphalt layer. So, we have two structurally uh, structural related cracks that occurs due to a repeated load applications. One is uh, bottom up cracking, another we call it as top down cracking. means the occurrence of bottom up and the top down cracking depends on the material behavior. In a mechanistic empirical payment design guide, the bottom up cracking and the top down cracking are predicted using these two expressions which are shown here. Now, if you see a bottom up cracking, so the bottom up cracking has an empirical expression in which this C1, C1 dash, C2, C2 dash are a constant parameter and DI bottom up is a damage index for a bottom up cracking. For a top down cracking again you can see D, uh, DI top down in an equations. This is again a damage index predicted for a top down cracking. So, a cracking in a payment is related to the damage in a payment using a DI. This DI is called as a damage index. So, this damage index can be calculated using this expression damage index which is nothing but n by n f where here n is a traffic repetitions existing traffic repetitions and n f is a fatigue life of a payment for a conditions fatigue life of a uh, payment for a conditions J, M, L, P and T. This J can be an axial load group M axial type L maybe truck type
MEPDG as per MEPDG design, P defined as month and T payment temperature. So, here damage index is a ratio of an actual traffic to the number of uh, traffic that payment can withstand at any given conditions. So, you calculate separately for a given conditions and sum it up to get the total damage index. Now, if you look into the sample damage index of a sample, uh, sample damage index, you can see a three picture here, one corresponds to single axle, other corresponds to tandem axle and the third one corresponds to a tridem axle. So, now the x axis in this figure is load and y axis a damage index which is n by n f. So, n is actual traffic on the payment, uh, actual traffic the payment is subjected to this NF is a calculated value. This NF is calculated value and this depends on a material property. Now, if you see N ratio of N to NF, so as the axial load increases, you can see a damage increases. So, for a small axle, a small axial load, the damage is uh, minimum and as the axial load increases, the damage increases. So, you sum it up over a different axial load to get the cumulative damage. So, you can sp split it into a different zones, different axial zones and sum it up to get a cumulative damage. So, likewise, you can calculate separately for a single axle, tandem axle, tridem axle and for different truck and for different uh, month durations and for different payment temperature, find out what is the damage index of a payment, damage index and use this damage index in this uh, fatigue cracking expressions to determine the extent of fatigue cracking, either a top down cracking or a bottom, down, bottom up cracking. So, this fatigue cracking, top down cracking is expressed in length or otherwise feet per miles and this Bottom up cracking is expressed in the percentage of area cracked. So, this is what MEPDG suggests in relating a crack and the damage of the payment. So, this damage full 100 percent damage does not occur at the initial stage of a life. It is a cumulative damage that occurs over a, uh, over a period of time and this cumulative damage at any given instant of time is used to predict the extent of cracking in the payment. IRC suggests using these two equations for determining the fatigue, uh, fatigue damage in the payment. Now, if you look closely into these expressions, you have NF which is nothing but the number of repetitions of a standard axial load is related to tensile strain in the payment. This is a critical tensile strain in the payment. It can be either on the top of the payment uh, or top of a bituminous layer or at the bottom of a bituminous layer and MRM which is nothing but the resilient modulus of the mixture. So, now if you look into this equations, there is an another constant, another parameter called C. This C is related to a mixture property and C is given by 10 power m where this m is again 
related to the volume of uh, effective binder content and the volume of aeroids in the mixture. So, this NF which is nothing but the uh, number of repetitions of a standard axial load the payment can ex payment can withstand before it fails in cracking. So, you have two different NF value one corresponding to 80 percent reliability and other corresponding to 90 percent reliability. So, in IRC directly uses the material property here resilient modulus and the C value and directly calculates the NF without using any a damage index here. So, this is how you relate a damage to the fatigue cracking that occurs in the payment. So, when do we say that the payment has fully damaged or it cannot be used further for a traffic movement is. So, there is a tolerance limit defined for the design. IRC defined the tolerance limit to be a 20 percent cracked area. Here bottom up cracking and the top down cracking in terms of a units because bottom up cracking as per IRC will be something a map like crack. And we do not have any issue here in defining the units for a bottom up cracking in terms of a percentage area. In terms of for top down cracking, for top down cracking, top down cracking is generally a longitudinal crack. IRC assumes 30 mm wide crack and calculate the area and represent in terms of a area. So, the tolerance limit as defined as per IRC is 20 percent of a cracked area. MEPDG design defines a tolerance limit based on the reliability. For a bottom up cracking it is 20 percent of 25 percent of a cracked area and a for, for a top down cracking it is 1000 feet per miles. So, this all corresponds to 90 percent reliability. So, for a higher reliability the value will go down and for a lower reliability this value can be increased. By now we know that the fatigue life is expressed in terms of a number of repetitions of a traffic load. So, there are various factors that affects the fatigue life of a payment. One main factor is the traffic load. So, the traffic load governs the magnitude of a tensile strain in the payment. So, a higher the tensile strain the crack will propagate faster in the payment and another factor is the fatigue characteristics property of a uh, bituminous mixtures so, and if, uh, allied properties like volumetric mixture volumetric properties, payment temperature, aging of bituminous mixtures in the payment, whether we provide a rest period uh, to simulate the traffic conditions in the field or is there any healing of a material that happens during a rest period or a moisture condition of the payment whether the payment is dry or a wet all these properties are taken care when you simulate and find the fatigue characteristics properties of a bituminous mixtures. So, the main common two factors which is considered in a fatigue life predictions is one is a traffic characteristics or a traffic load and other is a fatigue characteristics of the bituminous mixtures. Now, there are few performance prediction equations of a uh, performance prediction equation given here. When you look closer into this equations, the basic equation is of this type. Here NF is number of repetitions to failure. So, NF value is given by a constant as a function of strain 1 upon strain to the another constant you have an exponential equation here. So, here this A and B are a regression constant and epsilon is a critical tensile strain in the payment. So, this A, B are a regression constant and epsilon is a critical tensile strain. So, over a period of time this equation has been modified 
to a uh, second equation here nf with a function material function that is stiffness of a mixture included in the equations. So, you have an another function stiffness S mix. So, here again A, B and C are a regression constant. So, now if you look into the current IRC codal practice, the current IRC codal practice equation is of the same form where a function A is constant A is given 1 by strain B is 3.89 and the stiffness of a mix is given in terms of a resilient modulus of a mix. So, M R M here is a resilient modulus of a mix and to the power C. So, this IRC equation is of the form the one which is given in the second row. So, this equation was further studied and modified Finn et al in 1986 gave a equations for predicting the fatigue life of a bituminous payment or a bituminous layer with a more material dependent functions and if you look into this equations it is again a function of strain critical strain and E which is nothing but the dynamic modulus of a mixture here and the factor or the functions material functions here k1 k2 k3 are a material dependent property so this is uh, this functions k1 k2 k3 are no more a regression constant it depends on the material behavior shell uses nf equation to be this nf as a function of um, stiffness of the mix and the strain, we can also see this NF depends upon the volume of a binder used. So, the same equation is used by Astro for the design of uh, flexible payment. Now, the another equation which the current MEPDG design uses is in MEPDG relations, this NF was obtained in the laboratory lab predicted value. This lab predicted value is compared with the field value. Field value. So, this on comparing this lab predicted and the field value, they have suggested a three factors beta 1, beta 2, beta 3 as a three calibration factors which we call it as a field calibration factors. So, so this constants k1, k2, k3 are a material calibration factors. Now, if we want to predict the fatigue life of a payment say for example, using this MEPDG design equations, this K1, K2, K3 values material calibration factors has to be determined based on the material functions. Not only this, we also uh, need to know a performance prediction of bituminous mixtures, uh, how it performs bituminous mixtures, how it performs at a low temperature or how it performs at a high temperature. So, this further will help us in selecting a bitumen or a binder for a uh, particular locations. So, now in the lab we need to predict the characteristics behavior of a bituminous mixtures beforehand we use. So, so, how to simulate this fatigue cracking that occurs in a pa payment in a laboratory and predict these constants k1, k2, k3.